now. You should have. Okay, I think we're good. We are going to, uh, thank you to those uh, folk, people who have joined us. I'm going to actually just start again and welcome everyone to the FIFA Suspend Israel, uh, Apartheid Israel. I'm Karen Rodman. I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Uh, Friends of Sabil and Just Peace Advocates are delighted that so many people from around the world have joined today and that we have more than 70 organizations along with hundreds of individuals who have already joined in support of this campaign as we kick off these initial steps. Today's webinar, um, as you're learning, is available in English, Arabic, uh, and Spanish, and you can choose the language of your choice using the globe-like icon at the bottom of the screen, and instructions will also be provided as we can in the chat, but if you have any questions or issues with the translation, please indicate uh, in the chat to the hosts, and we will, uh, we will work with you on that. As we consider uh, the settler colonization of Palestine, we consider it also in the context of the historic and ongoing violence of settler colonization across Turtle Island and elsewhere in the world. I'm joining you today from the Mississauga lands on the traditional territory that is covered by the Williams Treaty. We'll put the link into uh, the chat in a moment so you can check uh, the land that you uh, are, indigenous land that you are on. I'd now like to introduce Jonathan Katab, who will be facilitating today's session. Jonathan is known to many of you. He is a co-founder of El Haq. Jonathan is an internal human rights lawyer who practices in the United States, Palestine, and Israel. He is the founding, uh, founding director of Just Peace Advocates and also the executive director of Friends of Sabil North America. Over to you, Jonathan. Thank you very much, Karen, and welcome to all of you. I want to first acknowledge the really hard work behind the scenes of so many people uh, to try and get a webinar in three different languages with interpretation isn't always an easy thing. Uh, first of all, I want to create a little bit of the context in which we are working. Uh, as you know, probably people throughout the world know this much more so than in North America, FIFA is a collection of a number of national groups. Uh, so there is a Palestinian football association, there is an Israeli football association, there, is a, there are regional as well as international groups. Now FIFA is a very powerful organization and not always does it uh, reflect the desires of the hundreds of millions of fans and participants who love the game of football throughout the world. In fact, the Palestinian Football Association has had a long history of trying to get Israel to actually live up to the conditions and the regulations of FIFA itself. One of the most basic of them uh, is that they shouldn't infringe on somebody else's territory. They shouldn't allow groups uh, that are uh, in that <clears throat> territory to play in their national uh, football league or even players without getting permission from that group. Not only that, but they are also required to facilitate the movement of coaches and players back and forth. They are required to allow the building of stadiums and the carrying on of activities, and certainly to refrain from shooting and killing or, or imprisoning without any cause uh, footballers. Uh, in addition to these two specific uh, things, uh, there is also the requirement to fight racism. That is sort of a major component of the activity of FIFA worldwide, that they are opposed to racism, that they promote uh, solidarity and brotherhood uh, among nations and definitely oppose discrimination and racism. On all three counts, Israel and the Israeli Football Association uh, has been delinquent and FIFA has not done enough or, or has done anything uh, to prevent that. Uh, in fact, they have even changed their internal regulations to make it difficult 
for the Palestinian Football Association uh, to carry out what it needs to do within the structure of FIFA, which is why we as members of civil society have to step in. We can't always expect the Palestinian Football Association uh, to do what it needs to be done to bring FIFA to respect its own regulations. Uh, this is basically what this uh, webinar is all about. And it's only the first step in a huge campaign that we hope to launch uh, of more than 60 organizations and many important individuals have started this kickoff, but we expect many more to join. And we also expect to build on with the work that others, uh, including the BDS Federation uh, with its campaign, the red card campaign has already done. So we're glad to be part of an international uh, movement to bring about accountability. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our first speaker, who is uh, Rizik Salah. He is the honorary head of the Khadr Football Federation. He himself is a, an ex-prisoner, having spent 21 years uh, in uh, Israeli jails. And I would like to turn over the, menu, uh, the microphone to him. He will be speaking in Arabic, but you will be able to hear him in English or in Spanish in translation. Uh, please, Liwa uh, Rizq, Salah, Faddal. We will uh, uh, discuss uh, what is happening in Palestine regarding what happens uh, uh, from the Palestine from the Israeli practices against the uh, uh, football uh, uh, associations in Bethlehem in Al Khadr, which is southern of Bethlehem by three kilometers. On April 10th, 2022, the Israeli soldiers have uh, um, assassinated a, pl a football player who plays in uh, Al Khadr uh, football club uh, just because he was visiting his friends. Uh, this uh, uh, the friend's house was close or next to uh, Route 60, next to um, uh, settlements. They've just killed him without him attempting anything against them. Uh, this uh, 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 young man used to uh, be a player for seven years, and he was we lost him in just one moment. Nowadays, uh, nowadays we we also buried in Khadr the uh, the child. Muhammad Saeed Ghanem, he is 14 years old. He was 14 years old. He also used to train in uh, Al Qadr um, Sports Academy. He was visiting his grandfather's house. He he left the house to uh, buy some things since he was uh, ch uh, chocolates or candies. And, and he was there. And he was uh, close to a point where Israeli soldiers were there just to, uh, uh, they are there guarding uh, the 60 uh, route and they've just shot him many, many bullets and killed him in his neck, whereby he was martyred uh, uh, right away and he was buried today in Al Qadr village. This is not the only practice that Israeli military always uh, perform. Um, did, um, other than that, they also uh, the number of uh, of uh, players in Al Khadr uh, club are also held pris in prison in Israeli prisons. Uh, they and in most times and in most um, matches that happen in and uh, in Al Khadr Stadium, which is uh, annexed to this uh, uh, colonized um, or this uh, uh, 60 route, they just um, um, bomb them with uh, gas tear, tear gas bombs and uh, while playing a match and while playing with other uh, sports teams and and they will um, uh, target the, the audience and uh, the, they will spoil the match and it will end because no one can play under such uh, situations. 
there are also others who are hit, hit by uh, direct bullets or just impeding uh, sports teams, especially the Al Qadr team. And of course, what happens in Qadr applies to every camp, every city in Palestine where Al Qadr the, the club uh, would go for, uh, to, to have a match with uh, with other uh, with Hebron uh, sports uh, club or Ramallah sports club. So we they would be suspended on a, a, a checkpoint, or they would return their bus back, or they would uh, they would um, keep them uh, stuck for. A, several hours. So this, uh, these are the practices that happen always uh, by the Israeli occupying authorities. What happened to Muhammad Ghanim and what happened um, today, and especially yesterday, to, uh, the, to uh, 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 the child Muhammad Saeed Ghanim was due to a political decision on the highest uh, political level in Palestine, which is uh, the Naftali uh, Bennett, when he said, and I believe that all uh, media around the world have uh, uh, recorded this political decision on the highest level that anyone who uh, try, attempts to raise hand on any Israeli soldier would be killed by all means. This is documented internationally uh, with in all media around the world. Um, so when we say um, uh, uh, those who can't uh, raise their hand on, on the Israeli for, uh, forces, so these two uh, children, two youngsters, did not raise any hand uh, in order on any against any soldier to be executed. They're just. Um, uh, innocent children and and uh, and it was if the uh, hand was raised against the uh, israeli soldiers they were they will be killed but those children did not raise any hand against uh, the israeli soldiers to be executed also they don't uh, target only um, uh, the, the, the uh, those who play sports they also target uh, journalists uh, just as happened with shirin abu akle the, the journalist that was martyred just to uh, hide uh, any um, truth that might be conveyed. They don't want the world to know what's happening around uh, uh, in Palestine, this uh, people who is very oppressed. We in Al Khadr um, Sports Club, and I'm very sure that what we have in this, uh, what happens here in, in our club happens in all clubs in Palestine. So we have a, a letter that we address the FIFA to tell them not to be, be use this double standard method. Just as the uh, uh, Russian war uh, on Ukraine has been there for two months and all Russian teams have been boycotted, but we want uh, the, that FIFA to, to uh, just add, uh, does as happened and to uh, uh, perform the same way and to be just fair and just the Palestinian case. Uh, for two months, uh, the war has been on Ukraine, and but then Palestine, it's been for 70, uh, four years. And we, in the, and as I've mentioned earlier, we've uh, um, encountered uh, um, lots of displacement, killing and uh, assassination to Palestinian. Uh, so we, we would uh, request from the FIFA to be fair and just and just to follow uh, the, the procedures that were um, um, assumed in the, in Ukraine against the Russian teams just as um, the same when when um, Muhammad name was assassinated uh, without raising any hand al khadr uh, club had addressed uh, the the Argentinian uh, uh, alliance for football and had uh, who was about to have a match on uh, June 6, 2022, uh, with uh, with uh, with the uh, Israeli uh, uh, national team. But but and we we but we thank Argentina and their uh, coalition that they have. Um, Suspended this um, uh, match, and when they and they when they saw the proof that um, Hamad name was assassinated uh, by the Israelis and did not and that he did not do anything against the Israelis, although all international law allows give Hamad law uh, uh, the right to struggle, but if we even say that Hamad uh, uh, 
he he was uh, he he was shot and died before even attempting to defend uh, his land and his rights. Sayyid Rizq, Sayyid Rizq, shukran. We also demand that FIFA hold Israel accountable and uh, not only to boycott it, not uh, not to have uh, matches with it. We also demand that it stands on the side of Palestinian people and to support uh, um, uh, or to defend uh, the suffering that Palestinian people have been going through for the past 74 years. This match that was supposed to take place Maybe Israelis uh, had a hand in uh, uh, choosing the date to have the date on the, the 6th uh, of June, which is the 55 uh, years anniversary of the Palestinian, uh, of their occupation to the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Uh, the, and all um, uh, um, Islamic and uh, Christian holy sites, and of course the uh, Golan Heights and Gaza. So this, uh, this uh, date wasn't selected just by coincidence. And, 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 and that's why the Israeli occupation would want uh, to not only to ban Palestinians to uh, play football, but also to ban Palestinians from getting anything that would uh, lead them to a good life. Thank you very much. Yeah, we will have a chance for questions. Uh, thank you very much, Rizek, for a very powerful uh, description of what is happening on a day-to-day -to, -day to one group, one club, the Khadr Club, uh, which also happened to other clubs. We will go back to uh, Mr. Rizek later with the questions and answers, but we want to hear now from attorney uh, Gonzalo Boy, who is uh, in Spain and who was uh, representing and assisting the Palestinian Football Association in its attempt to get some kind of justice within the structures of FIFA uh, in the past. Uh, Mr. Gonzalo, uh, please, uh, the microphone is yours. Thanks, Jonathan. I will speak slowly, both to help the interpreters and to allow FIFA to understand fully what I will say. Thank you. During, during the period that I oversaw the legal department of the Palestine Football Association, our main objective was to try to get FIFA to force the Israeli Football Association to respect FIFA's own rules. These were intense years in which we were subject to all kinds of pressures and action that have very little to do with what should be the ethics of any sport association. A specific committee was created in FIFA for the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, chaired by the South African Tokyo Seguale. And all the work carried out there served to produce a series of documents that proved that our legal positions were solid and could not be contradicted. Once again, as it always happened with the Palestinian case, reason and the law were on our side. The powerful people were not. Susan, Susan Shalabi, Jibril Rajub, and the whole PFA were fully committed to this task. And we have devoted years of work in order to reconduct not only the attitude of the Israeli Football Association, but also and especially FIFA's own behavior. FIFA even created a human rights department, a department that has never properly acted in defense of human rights nor has worked to prevent human rights violations related to football and its related activities. After a while, five years of hard work, however, we realized that in reality, it was not only that the Israeli Football Association did not to, um, intend to comply with FIFA statute, but that FIFA itself was not interested in making them respect those statutes. So, at the end of the day, it was not only the Israeli Football Association, but also FIFA's own fault. While Mr. Infantino was telling us one thing in private, he was saying and doing another in public. And worse, still, he was generating support to discourage all of those within FIFA who understood our claims 
and assumed that it was based exclusively on FIFA's own rules. And this is important. We have always based all our claims in FIFA's own rules. Surely, one day we will know what type of pressure they put on Mr. Infantino himself, or why he has never wanted FIFA to honor its own status and act within the framework of respect of human rights and international law. But on, not all the blame should go to Mr. Infantino and FIFA, also to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, as it was also in their hands to reconduct the situation, but they prefer to look in another direction. Federated sport activities inside Israel's settlements in occupied Palestinian territory are undoubtedly war crimes. And after years of struggle, we have seen how FIFA has been complicit in and cover up this sort of crimes. But not only FIFA, also the companies that sponsor the football activities of those clubs installed in the Palestinian occupied territories are liable for this sort of crimes. And I'm pointing out to the companies because football, that sort of football without money will never take place. Sport should be an instrument of union between people. Football for various reasons should be more so but they will never achieve this if their own leaders do not respect that which is basic to peaceful coexistence. We, the jurists, call rule of coexistence among which those relating to human rights and international law are basic. In the field of sport, it can be called fair play. Therefore, I concluded by asking, how does FIFA expect future generation of footballers to respect fair play if FIFA, if itself, that does not respect it. And this is the real problem. FIFA does not respect its own rules. FIFA does not respect human rights. FIFA does not respect human, international humanitarian law and international law. So at the end, how can we expect Israeli Football Association to respect it when FIFA governing body is not doing that? The fault is in the Israeli side, but the fault and the, ma the major part of the fall is on the FIFA, who has all the means and the tools to prohibit the activities of federated football in the occupied territories. And I think that the rest of the, of the talk, we can leave it for the uh, question and answer, because Jonathan, I really would like to stick to the 10 minutes that you, you have said at the beginning. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Gonzalo. Uh, and thank you for sticking to the time. Uh, but uh, you have pointed out something very important, uh, which is that often the organization itself, FIFA, does not follow its own rules, is, is subject to pressures from those who are powerful. Well, what happens when an organization doesn't follow its rules, when a government doesn't follow its own rules? Well, that's when ordinary people like us in civil society have to move in and pressure them to do so. This Thanks. is where our next speaker comes in. Many of you know Roger Waters as, a, as an entertainer, as a rock star, as a wonderful uh, person who makes people happy with his music. But uh, what some of you also know is that he is an activist. He is a person with a conscience. He's a person who puts his star uh, status at the service of causes of justice and causes of freedom that he believes in. But very few people of you know that he is also a supporter of the Palestinian people and a supporter particularly of the need to make FIFA accountable. So I turn the microphone over to you, Roger. Take it away. Well, thank you very much. Anybody who doesn't know that I'm a supporter of freedom for the Palestinian people has been wandering around with their eyes shut and covering their ears with muffs for the last 15 years or so, because uh, I've tried to make as much noise as I possibly can in, that, in, in those areas. I, I listen with great interest to all the speakers so far. Um, that I have listened to, um, particularly the last few. I'm so bad with names. Forgive me if I don't call you by your names. The law. We cannot rely on the law. 
if we could rely on the law, we would not be having this conversation now. It is quite clear this year on the 74th anniversary of the Nakba that if international law had teeth, if the ICC could perform the duty for which it was set up, which it can't because some of the most powerful countries in the world do not subscribe to the Treaty of Rome or any of the other accoutrements of what we might think was international law, we would not be sitting in this webinar having this conversation. Um, the criminality of the Zionist project in Palestine is so open and clear and demonstrable and arguable against in any court of law anywhere in the world except possibly Israel, that um, we throw our hands up in exasperation and frustration and say, but, 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 obviously it's completely illegal and it's an open and shut case. We know that. This is why this uh, talk with FIFA and with everybody all over the world who cares about the beautiful game, football, is so important because it will engage people power, ordinary people like me. I mean, for my sins, I'm an Arsenal supporter. I have been all my life. It's a hard life for us Arsenal supporters, but nevertheless, we are passionate as are the supporters of all the football clubs all over the world, whether there's village, village teams or small clubs in small towns in South America or wherever, we care passionately about this game. And I have seen the people power at football clubs demonstrated. Five or six years ago, I, I, I did a gig somewhere in Palm Springs, I think it was, and I got into a conversation with the supporters of Celtic Football Club in Glasgow, in Scotland, because UFA, the, the European version of FIFA, fined them because somebody held up a Palestinian flag when there was a visiting Israeli team in a European country, I believe it, they find them. What did the supporters of Celtic do? The next time it happened, everybody in the stadium was holding up a Palestinian flag and saying, F you, we don't care what you think. We, like Roger Waters and Jonathan Cattell, we believe in human rights. That is our platform. Paris, 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. If we can stand on that platform, none of these questions ever arise. So that's the people. But the other thing is player power, right? So, and I've seen it beginning to rise in the last few years. Chowdhury at Leicester City. I'm only talking about the English League now because I don't know about... Um, other football leagues. I, we have a player at Arsenal, Mohamed El Neni, who has been supporting this cause as loud as he can, because obviously if he raises his voice, he gets his knuckles wrapped by the club and told to shut up, El Neni, you be quiet. This is, that's not, that is not the West's view of this. You have to, be, and El Neni has said, mm, no, I'm not going to be quiet. Mo Salah, is playing this afternoon in the Champions League final in Paris. Mo has also made some grumbling noises. I want Mo Salah to stand on the top of Mount Everest and go, no, this is wrong. This is completely wrong. What all these people on these webinars said about the law is absolutely correct. And we have to tell FIFA, tell them, just tell them, no, we will not play in these competitions. Now, now it wasn't, it wasn't, it was mainly the men in the street back in the 90s who persuaded the South African regime that apartheid was wrong. Well, it was wrong. It was wrong then, and it's wrong in Israel now. But the South Africans, the ruling class in South Africa, only really turned around and woke up and started to think, oh my God, maybe we have to change something. Excuse my South African accent, but I have to use it sometimes. Uh, when when the, when they when they realized they're not going to play cricket or rugby with us ah! 
trust me, that is exactly the reaction that we will get from the Israeli population if we can implement all the things that my colleagues, fellow activists, politicians, friends, football club directors that I'm hearing on this webinar. We need to get the Israeli people to wake up to the fact that notwithstanding all the Hasbro and the propaganda that they've lived under since they were tiny babies until now, that the world will not accept it any longer. Apartheid is wrong and we will not play football with you. And that is an end of it. And that's sort of all I have to say, except to thank you so much for having me on and giving me this platform to say a few words. Thank you, Roger. I think uh, you have put your finger right on it. Uh, I did not imply that people did not know that you're supporting the Palestinians. What I did want to uh, emphasize is that you have been at the forefront of those who have pointed out to this type of campaign, specifically to FIFA, that we should uh, target FIFA and that we should get football clubs behind it and players behind it and use people power where the regular legal channels have failed and where uh, one interesting thing that I should mention, and all of you I'm sure are aware of this, and it goes beyond just the issue of a double standard. For many years, players were told politics and sports don't mix. The beautiful game is the beautiful game. You should not get it mixed up with politics. All of a sudden now, two months ago, people realize that yes, they do mix. All of a sudden people are carrying Ukrainian flags everywhere and people are protesting uh, Russia's actions and people are actually prohibiting uh, Russian teams from playing with them. There is an organized powerful boycott of all Russian teams and players. Now I'm saying politics and sports mix specifically on the issue of apartheid, discrimination, and racism. The beautiful game is the game of bringing people together and prohibiting racism and discrimination. Thank you very much, Roger. And now I think we will listen uh, or we will give an opportunity for people who have specific questions uh, to ask of Roger, of myself, of Rizik Salah, or of attorney, Gonzalo Boy, because it is important for us to have our facts right and our facts straight and to go through the proper channels. And when they fail, which they have failed, then we should go to the street and go into the playgrounds and bring people power to bear. Uh, now, if you have any question, you can go into the chat box I will remind you that we can uh, deal with questions and responses in any of the three languages, English, Arabic, or Spanish. Uh, so we will now turn into questions and answers uh, if there are any. Hi, Jonathan. So um, we've got a few questions and comments coming in. Um, I just remind people that they should use the question option to provide those uh, not into the chat. So if you've got questions and still haven't uh, asked them to please put them uh, into the chat. First, though, I do want to highlight, and those of you that are following the chat will have noticed a um, message uh, coming from our friends um, in, um, in Uruguay around, um, around their particular campaign. It's called Uruguay Noveas. I hope I did that okay in Spanish. Uh, it's similar to the, um, to the one in Argentina, I guess, a friendly match between its national team and uh, Israel. Um, which they'd managed to cancel. And for that campaign, uh, they received a letter from Al Carter football team. Um, the main social organizations and movements in Uruguay have supported this demand. The letter to the AUF uh, will be delivered next week. 
And until then, it won't be published. Um, I think uh, it's okay that we uh, include that uh, in, in here, um, but uh, there is certainly uh, information uh, you know, and support coming from around the world for this campaign. So uh, would there uh, be, uh, and I'm being told uh, from uh, that it is actually not a friendly match, but an actual invitation to the national team to make final preparations for the World Cup in Israel. So I'm wondering if uh, the panelists any comments uh, to uh, to make uh, in that regard before I go to some of the questions? Roger. Um, I'm sorry, I, I confess that I didn't really hear the whole of that question. It's about people training in Israel, is it? Uh, for, the, for the World Cup. I heard the very end of it. My advice to anybody in an, any international team or any team at all about training for a competition in Israel is don't go, go read the manifesto of the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement and broadly follow its principles until the refugees are allowed the right of return and until people in Palestine are um, uh, get, get to self-determination and to live under, democra under democratic um, rules if you like no they must be boycotted nobody should go to israel to train for any football match ever until until uh, the football recession in, in in israel has been removed from fisa's lists until they subscribe to international law and disavow and distance themselves from the apartheid system of occupation that they have been using for the last 74 years. So the answer is no, you can't go and train there. Please don't. And I think also, thanks so much, Roger. I think also the uh, the question is a letter uh, from Palestine, from the Al Qaeda uh, team, health team, and that uh, we'll work to facilitate uh, that. Uh, and uh, that is being raised that in the case of your it is not a friendly match, but uh, the uh, actual uh, invitation, um, I'm having trouble with the word chat here, invitation to the national team to make the final preparations for the World Cup in Israel. So we will uh, we'll do that. And I see Gonzalez's hands up, so we'll go to him, and then after that, I will get to some of the other questions. Yes, uh, thank you. I, I just want to make clear something. For five years, we have gone through the path or of the law, and we have exhausted all that way, and we have demonstrated that we are right, and they didn't want to recognize that, and they didn't want to attend that. So, uh, in my opinion, now is the time for a different sort of action. And uh, when I was a rugby player at the university, we saw the boycott of the rugby union of South Africa, and we saw how effective it was. And at the end, South Africa was playing only with Argentina, but not with a normal Argentina, but with the, the Argentinian of the dictatorship. And that was their level, and that really works. But as a lawyer, my, my duty was first to go through the legal means. We have exhausted. That's finished. Now is the time for action. And this is a time that the civil society has to, to overtake the, the, what we have done and use it. We are the right. The law is on our side. The reason is our side. And the ethic is on our side. So the, all what we can do is really to act as proper activists and the civil society has to do. Great. And actually leading. Uh... Leading right uh, right into uh, into that is uh, one of the questions around what uh, what do we uh, need to do uh, first? What should people in this campaign uh, look at as a first target? For example, should we try to approach uh, official football federation in each country uh, to try to get them to sign on and endorse the FIFA appeal? Um, and uh, and so, what are some of your thoughts in that regard? Fans. Fans need to take Palestinian flags to their local football match, not on any special occasion, just as a, exactly like somebody, somebody brought up the, the Ukraine thing. And what an opportunity that has been for this conversation to burst out, because it's suddenly the hypocrisy is so blatant and appalling that 
what we care about Ukrainians, but we don't care about Palestinians. How is that possible? It's a bit like I was reminded as well, Karen, about Rodney Bennett, who was a American football player for the Seattle Seahawks, who was offered a few shekels to go to Israel um, to help sport wash Israel. And, and he looked into the whole thing and he said no. And it became a story. And in his saying, no, I am not going to go on that trip, he quoted John Carlos, who was the Olympic athlete who stood up in Mexico City in 1968 with his black glove on with the black power salute. And, he, and what Carlos said later was he said, in matters of human rights and, and human justice, he said, you are either in or you're out. I'm in. And Rodney Bennett said, I'm in too. Well, I'm in. And so are all of you. We're in. We want the whole world football watchers to be in. They're, this is not complicated. They are always trying to convince us that there is something complex about Israel and Palestine. There is not. There aren't. There are the oppressors and the oppressed. And John Carlos stood with the oppressed and so did Rodney Bennett and so do all of us and so must all of them. I was really interested to hear about the rugby football union. And, you know, and what I, I remember, I'm old enough to remember what happened. We they, <laughs> they were flabbergasted. They were absolutely amazed. They could not believe that we wouldn't play rugby with them. No, we won't. Because you're unacceptable. And in, in, in the matter of human rights, and universal justice, you're either in or you're out. We're in, you're out. And they changed. To what extent? We really, I don't know, but they did. So thank you. It's it's also important to keep it hopeful. Yeah. Uh, to keep it positive. Yeah. Uh, we are hoping for change. We are hoping for equality. We are hoping for an end to racism, an end to occupation, an end to oppression. Many times people say we are powerless. What can we do? We can do nothing. They have the guns, they have the tanks, they have the power, they have a 1%, the powerful always standing with them. And we say, no, we have right on our side, people on our side, and we do care for everyone. Absolutely. When we speak about equality, we're not speaking about hatred for anyone. We're speaking about equality uh, for everybody uh, then. Uh, I think I saw a quest uh, question, another question, Karen? Yeah, I've got, uh, there's several in the chat and I'm getting some uh, offline. So let me just uh, work with what we have. There's several related to South Africa and uh, maybe lessons learned um, and uh, an approach as well as the United Nations General Assembly. So during apartheid rule in South Africa, the United Nations General Assembly had issued a resolution for the creation of an apartheid committee in addition to resolutions for BDS or boycott, divestment and sanctions um, against apartheid South Africa regime. So now since the apartheid reports have been issued uh, from, uh, from uh, Amnesty and the other groups, Human Rights Watch, Betsalem and others regarding Palestine. Um, I guess the question is specifically to Gonzalo, but it could be to others. Could you tell us what possible steps we might take at the United Nations General Assembly to revive a new apartheid committee for Palestine and issue a BDS resolution against Israel in addition to, of course, uh, the work that we're doing in regard to FIFA on this as well? Well, uh, I think that's more a political action than a, a legal one. And that ha in order to achieve such political actions, maybe you need a lot of support. Roger was saying something important, take the flags to the stadium. Well, uh, as long as you take a lot of flags to the stadium, 30, 40, 50, 70, 90,000 uh, flags as you, you, you can take in a stadium like in Madrid or Barcelona or many other places, that will have a tremendous repercussion because the, all those matches are Televised. I mean, can you imagine if the if the if the in the finals tonight they will take everybody who goes to the stadium take a Palestinian flag? Tomorrow the problem will be not the result of the match; it will be the problem of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, and that's the reason that that's what give, will give power in order to force a resolution of the United Nations. But we know the United Nations is is what it is. 
You know, when, sorry, I just want to say something. After COVID, the first football matches that started to go, I watched a Premier League match and all the players took a knee and every single one of them had Black Lives Matter written across the back of their shirt. I was proud to be English for the first time, you know, in about 30 years. To see that on an English football pitch really moved my, my inner Englishman. So it's hugely, of course, it's been slightly watered down now. It's now football against racism, but they continuing with it. It's still, it's every single match they take up knee. And it's hugely important because either you are against racism or you're not. All those players taking a knee and the officials and the Football Association in England are all saying we are against. Well, if you are, why are you playing soccer with Israel? It's the most racist possible situation that you could possibly imagine anywhere. Why, why don't you act upon the fact that you want to stamp out racism? It's really important. What happens in the clubs is so important. Sorry, I was banging on. This is great. Thank you so much, Roger. Uh, Jonathan, did you want to get in on that, that question or should I ask? Yeah, no, ask another question because I thought I saw a question about what do we need to do for the upcoming uh, uh, Mondial, for the upcoming uh, World okay. Cup uh, in Qatar. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, go to that question <laughs> next. I am trying to pick and choose because there's lots coming in. So let's go to that question next. Uh, and, and, and I'd like to ask uh, Rizek also uh, to uh, really uh, give us a few of his thoughts of what happens in the upcoming World Cup and what does he expect uh, players, groups, and countries to do in the upcoming uh, club. Sayed Rizek. أني أنا أتوقع من العالم وقبل حتى أن even before the World Cup matches next November in Qatar I expect that all the world clubs should agree on condemning the Israeli practices against the Palestinian sports especially that they are fully aware that the regime in Israel is an apartheid one, an exclusively apartheid one. And by the way, the Israeli apartheid regime has surpassed the former uh, South African one. Albeit, the Israelis are smart enough not to place marks or signs on the restaurant saying Palestinians are not and dogs are not allowed in. It happens without having the signs. Israel speaks nicely about democracy and human rights and respecting international law, while it's very far away from that. You have spoke about the UN and a UN resolution in this regard. I believe there are former uh, UN resolutions against the Israeli racism and Israeli injustice since many decades and they are not implemented. Why? Because Israel considers itself above the law, the international law, and feels that it is protected with an international unjust regime or system represented by the USA government. So it commits all this demonization against the Palestinian people, especially the sports, Palestinian sports, and considers itself as protected with this unjust international system. I think the FIFA is following the real footsteps in treating the Palestinian sports. It was supposed by for the FIFA to respect its own systems, principles, and standards, and to apply it, to apply them injustice and equally on all the sport people around the world. What I expect from the international community and the sport people around the world before the World Cup is to stand united in supporting the Palestinian people 
and for every sports club to, uh, uh, put it, to place itself in the uh, Palestinian shoes and their play, uh, in their Palestinian's place. They are in Italy, Spain, Britain, wherever. They have the freedom of playing sports so they can access the World Cup. But the Palestinians, since this moment and for the coming next 1,000 years, they will not be able to get to the World Cup because they are deprived a lot because of the Israeli sanctions committed against them in Palestine. So we demand for justice and solidarity as happened internationally. And we support that, by the way, with the Ukrainian cause for the last two months to have not equal, but double of that for Palestine. Because Ukraine issue started for two months, but injustice for, uh, against the Palestinians by Israel, it's since 74 years. Thank you. Uh, if I may also uh, chime in on this, I would like to mention to everybody who is listening today that this is just the beginning of a campaign, which we hope to increase continuously. And hopefully uh, the events of the World Cup will be an important venue in which to bring it to a crescendo. We need more organizations to join. We need specific actions in each country. We need particular clubs to also take up the issue. Many times people say we can do nothing. No, we can do something. Even if it's just raising the Palestinian flag all the time, uh, we can make sure that we are on the side of justice, on the side of equality. Many people say, why are you just speaking on Israel? We are not. We stand for equality. We stand against racism and discrimination. Uh, no matter where it is, no matter who is guilty or who is the victim. This is not a partisan issue, it's a moral issue. Yeah, can I just say one thing as well? Somebody was saying that we should at least have some optimism in our movement, and I was nodding. Yes, absolutely we should. 10 years ago, 2012, November the 29th, I spoke to the Human Rights Committee of the United Nations in New York City. Now, and I made a speech and it was all very nice and blah, blah, blah. But had I mentioned the word apartheid in 2012, alongside the word Israel, I would have disappeared under a pile of shoes and paper <laughs> cups. It would have been completely not allowed. You couldn't. Now, in 2022, you cannot have a conversation about Israel without using the word apartheid. It is absolutely accepted. So that's one thing. Things have changed and they've changed radically and they changed very quickly. And the other thing is, I must put out a word for the peace movement within the Jewish community in Canada and in the United States. These are the two sort of countries where I know it but It has changed exponentially. The uprising of people, Jewish people of good faith who are with us, who are with you who are with the idea that <coughs> should be universal and human rights have to be universal. It's changed exponentially as well. And in the young people in the universities. So we, we are winning this fight. We are winning the fight against uh, the ministry of whatever it is in Tel Aviv that creates all the Hasbro that we fight against. So we should feel good about that moving into 2022 and the World Cup. That's it. Karen, next question. Um, yeah, so there are, yeah, are a couple of questions related to racism. I think we've touched on that, but racism within uh, within the uh, Israeli Football League. And I mean, I'm also thinking, Gonzalo, in terms of some of the legal work and the work that was done so painstakingly uh, through uh, the decade or so related to racism and uh, and uh, for, you know other other things related to settlement, but also just generally racism. So that that would be uh, be uh, sort of the 
one theme of a question. Another one that maybe I could put in is, are there, um, you know, a couple, maybe three, four more uh, football superstars that we could uh, be reaching out to? Uh, they've made a couple of names. I'm not a football uh, um, a person enough to maybe uh, know who they who they would be or who to suggest, but uh, like sort of, so are there things like that we can do? So those are two kind of different questions, but just to group those together, because I know we're, you know, closing in on time. Somebody, I saw, I saw a news item on the internet this morning. Somebody, a league, the Italian league, I think, has just been won by a club. And the captain of that club was, was carrying a Palestinian flag in his hand when he went to take the cup at the beginning. So it is happening, you know. Mares, Riyad Mares, a great, great right winger for Manchester City, has been very outspoken about these matters. They're there. They're there and they're beginning to get the feeling that they can stand up and be counted. And there will be more and more of them. And there are many as well. There are many politically motivated young people in football. In England. Marcus Rashford, he plays for Manchester United. He's a very well-known international player, but he does a lot of work with disadvantaged people homeless people, but also with children's charities and things in Manchester, his own his hometown. So th there are people, and there are a lot of them, I'm sure, you know, who understand what, what, what it is that we're talking about and how important the rights of ordinary people all over the world are, the dispossessed, the poor, the cold, the hungry, the war shattered, the refugees, the, this, the Palestinians, the Syrians, the, the list is endless, but it's a list that we acknowledge. And Marcus Rashford does, and so do uh, hundreds, I'm sure. We just need them to go, yeah, I'm in. We need more Rodney Bennett's and John Carlos's in this world. And the, they are there and we will find them and they will join us. I know it. I know it. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that when Eleven at one time decided not to play football with Israel or, or in football related with Israel, FIFA will take the proper action. But there was an unanswered question about the World Cup in, in, in Qatar. Yeah. I mean, my answer is we should not go. That country violated human rights in order to, co to build these stadiums. And that country was helping FIFA in order to prevent Palestinian, uh, Palestine Football Association to succeed in our proposals uh, uh, for, for the clubs in the settlement. So if we are against violations of human rights, we should defend the human rights both in Palestine, but also in Qatar. Here, yeah, yeah. here. For me, my answer is very clear. Don't go there. Care? Any more questions? Can't hear you. Can't, Can't hear, hear you. Yet. Sorry about that. Too many uh, multing tasks. There are a couple of other questions. There's one that actually just got put into the chat around, can we address the continuation of the Palestine Cup with FIFA directly? Maybe that's a lower target than, uh, than the sort of the suspension that we've been talking about. Any, uh, any comments on, on that? FIFA will follow. FIFA is not going to lead you anywhere. FIFA is one of these 1% powerful organizations that is entirely controlled by the ruling class, whatever you want to call it. They are not going to lead you anywhere. Once you've got them by the nose and you're dragging them forward and it hurts, they'll go wherever you lead. But the people have to lead them. They are not going to do anything ever here, here. Here, they're here. corrupt it's a completely corrupt organization everybody has known it for umpteen years we know that ignore them we um, need going, to take this into our own hands go, going backwards to the to the to the boycott of rugby uh, in south africa and what just roger has said is very important i mean fifa is a business and a corrupt business institution at that time, the success of the rugby boycott to South Africa was based in rugby was not a professional game. It was a game that we used to play in our free time. And we were much more interested in fair play rather than in business. And we decided not to play against South African teams. And that, that was a success. And we were not 
we didn't have fear not to play. And I think we have oh. to create a bit more awareness in the footballers, A, that they should not fear, B, that they will be well defended by the people if they decide to, 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 to move forward in a position against the Israeli football, and C, that there is no rule no rule that they can use against them for doing exactly what they're what they want to tell and they want to say in public i mean at the end of the day it's free speech if they want to speak freely they have the right to speak freely and they should know that that's free speech is one of their fundamental rights yeah well if only go ahead roger no, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, you know, when somebody talks about free speech, and I love that you're talking about free speech, obviously it's very, very close to my heart and to all of our hearts, but I can't let the opportunity to go to say, Pretty Patel, free Julian Assange. Free speech is one of the most important cornerstones of the possibility for this planet to survive. What are you doing? Why do you have to even think for five minutes? Obviously, it was a complete travesty, all the trials and the blah, blah, and the extradition procedure. It's nonsense. Just let the man go home to his wife and children and resume his work as the most important publisher in the 21st century. Sorry, but that's all. I can't let okay, that go Roger. by without saying it. Okay, Roger. We're, we're, I think we're getting close to the end unless there are... Uh, additional questions in uh, the chat box. I would like to give a couple of minutes to each of our panelists uh, to give a final word uh, because I know it's Saturday and people uh, want to go out. Uh, shall I start with uh, Rizek? Uh, if you have a final two minutes, please keep it short. Your message has been very strong. Repeat it, please. Give give us your final two minutes. Rizek? Yani, uh, what we uh, want uh, in the next uh, uh, World Cup in November in Qatar is to have greater solidarity with the Palestinian uh, sports internationally and with the Palestinian with the oppressed, displaced, murdered, injured, imprisoned uh, Palestinian people who lost their houses and groves to see more solidarity in this uh, international uh, important event. We want to see Palestinian flags in a greater amounts and numbers in the Qatar's stadiums we saw the player Riyad Mahrez, who plays in Manchester City, holding the Palestinian flag twice in 2021 and this year. And also the player Paul Pogba, also he was holding the Palestinian flag when he went to the playground. And also uh, the Celtic uh, fans in Ireland, when they used to fill their stad with the Palestinian flags. We, uh, we know that, why they did so, because they believed that, they, they did that in facing or against the racial discrimination regime and the Israeli entity. That's why we demand the FIFA to stand we demand them for the 1,000th time to take up its responsibilities and to stand with, this, with the power of right represented by the Palestinians and not to stand with the right of power that is represented by the Israeli occupation. Thank you. Thank you, Rizek. Uh, two minutes, uh, Mr. Gonzalo Boy. Very quickly, just to say that uh, I think, as I was saying before, it's time to create awareness and create it among the footballers and the followers of the teams 
no matter how big the team is, if you're talking about Santiago Wanderers from Chile or you're talking from Barcelona Football Club, you have to create awareness in all those clubs and start this from bottom to the high, from the, the civil society into the football clubs. And as Roger said, FIFA will follow. No matter when, they will follow. And if they don't follow, we don't need FIFA. That's the, the, the real situation. Thank you. Roger, final word? Well, I'm just going to put my flag on. Um, and I will always be wearing my flag wherever I go and whatever I do. And uh, the one football club where I, I know I will always be welcome, it's funny you should mention that, is in Santiago in Chile, the Palestinian Football Club, which is a very ancient and powerful and wonderful club. So I, I send my love to all my Chilean friends. And uh, well done in the presidential election, by the way. And that's all I have to say, except that it was a great honor to be on this webinar with all of you wonderful people. So uh, I'm very proud to have been able to take part in it. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, final Good word about to, logistics, yeah, where, where, we can, where people can get a recording in the different languages. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, so the recording, it has been on Facebook and the link has been put in. So go to Just Peace Advocates or to Friends of Seville North America's Facebook pages and share, share, share. That will be the uh, English version. But the uh, the uh, Arabic, Spanish and English will be put up onto uh, the YouTube cha channels for Just Peace Advocates and I think for Friends of Seville North America. And uh, we'll be providing that link to those who registered. There were about three. 50 people who are registered for today's event um, so we will uh, be sharing it with anybody who registered whether they made it online or not with us um, and it'll be uh, available through social media and other places um, and we'll be providing key links the main thing right now is just simply if people can sign on to uh, the individual statement or if you're part of organizations especially sports teams and leagues or can get to other athletes or other folks to uh, to sign on to the campaign this is the early days so if you can do that there will be many many more actions and I think some of those ideas have come out here that I think we will be looking to uh, to follow up on so um, I think that's it for logistics uh, other than just to say thank you as I know you will Jonathan as well to our translators and everybody in the back room and to all of our participants you, and panelists yes thank you definitely thanks to all of those uh, behind the scenes who have made this webinar possible Thanks to all the panelists and thanks to all the people who have been working in this field, the BDS community, the campaigns that have been taking place, the individuals who have worked behind the scenes, uh, the unknown soldiers. And just a reminder to all of you, this is just the first step. We are launching a campaign. We want more organizations to join. We want more individuals to join and we want more actions and activities. And I think this can be one of the most effective tools that we have in our arsenal now to work nonviolently for a just, peaceful solution of equality and justice and against discrimination, racism and apartheid. There is no room for apartheid in the beautiful sport of soccer. Thank you very much. God bless Thank you. you. Well said. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.